Joining me now, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Senator Cotton, uh, your irresponsibility and your selfishness knows no bounds, but the Senate parliamentarian said uh, that the Democrats could raise the debt limit all on their own. So how is it the GOP's fault again? <laughs> I would say that Joe Biden's hypocrisy knows no bounds. Joe Biden voted against debt ceiling increases three times in the Bush era. That's something he conveniently omitted today, or maybe he's just forgotten it. But the Democrats have spent, uh, or want to spend $7 trillion on a party line basis to enact their socialist agenda. And they want us to give them the votes to borrow that money. No, that's not going to happen. Republicans are not going to give Democrats $7 trillion to enact their social agenda. And I don't know what they're waiting on, Laura. We've been clear about this for months. Mitch McConnell has said for months, you have the votes, you're trying to ram through the social agenda on a party line basis, raise the debt ceiling on a party line basis. Now, oh. Democrats for years have called Mitch McConnell the Grim Reaper of the Senate. They shouldn't be surprised when the Grim Reaper of the Senate kills their terrible ideas. Well, Progressive Caucus uh, member uh, Ro Khanna, Congressman, he said he's open to compromising on the 3.5. I love how we throw these numbers around like they're nothing. Uh, and he has a reason for it. The president said something that really struck me. He said when the New Deal started, it wasn't the New Deal that we study in the history books. It started with some small programs and then it grew. And I think that that is compelling. If we can get a number of these programs funded, we establish the base for which they can grow in the future. Senator, uh, he wants to plant the seeds for future massive spending and more government control down the road. That's, that's what he calls it, the new deal, the new raw deal. Yeah, Laura, and you can see this already happened this year. You know, they passed some new welfare programs in their spending bill in March one year long, and now they want to use this bill to extend them. That's why whatever they say it's going to cost, three and a half trillion, one and a half trillion, two trillion, the true cost is trillions of dollars of more money that we don't have. They don't want to be responsible, though, for borrowing that money. That's why they're uh, demanding that Republicans provide them the votes. We are not going to do that. If Joe Biden's out there all day long saying his uh, plan doesn't cost any money, it literally costs nothing, why do they need to borrow this money in the first place? It's just another example of Joe Biden misleading the American people. So, Senator, we have uh, Democrat activists um, on kayaks around uh, Joe Manchin's boat. Remember, during the Black Lives Matter stuff, they went over to Mitch McConnell's house screaming, putting stuff on his door. Now they're going into bathrooms. Now they're back in, now they're in the bathroom. They didn't jump into the stall with Kristen Cinema, but I don't put anything past them. If this, if the shoe were on the other foot here, what would they be saying about conservative activists? They, I mean, that would probably be domestic <laughs> terrorism, wouldn't it be? Or toilet terrorism? Well, so, so, yes, yeah, something along those lines, Laura. But look, I mean, I, I don't agree with Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin wanting to spend another trillion or two trillion dollars or whatever they end up may end up settling on. So it's not like they're conservatives on this question. But I don't think anyone should be protested in and out of what is essentially Joe Manchin's home in Washington. I mean, he lives on that boat. It's like going to... Uh, Mitch McConnell's home as well. And certainly you shouldn't have people following someone into the bathroom and filming them in the bathroom. And I was very disappointed to see Joe Biden kind of laugh it off today because he has the luxury of secret service uh, or uh, security. Um, it's something that's highly inappropriate and every Democrat should condemn it and they should tell their radical left to knock it off. And this is not the way that we should be conducting political debate in this country. Well, Senator, there's also a shocking new report on COVID's origins. Apparently, the Chinese, it was reported tonight, ordered a massive amount of PCR tests um, earlier in 2019, months and months before the first COVID case was reported. About 10.5 million spent on PCR tests in Hubei during 2019, nearly double the 2018 total, an upswing starting in May of 2019. The report alleges the unusual uptick likely signals awareness of a new disease spreading in around uh, Wuhan, or they knew there could be an accident in that lab if they were indeed researching a possible uh, future coronavirus vaccine. Thoughts on this? 
Laura, I haven't seen that specific report, but nothing would surprise me about the Chinese Communist Party's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. I mean, they've been lying about it from the very beginning. They covered up all the information. They disappeared people who were engaged in it. And then they pointed to some dumb food market down the street when literally there's a giant laboratory that researches bat-based coronaviruses down the road when bats are not present in Wuhan, when bats weren't present in that food market, and that lab is run by someone nicknamed the Bat Lady. But, Senator, assuming Anyone this is true about the PCR test, assuming this is true, and we know all that, but assuming this story is true, we have no reason to believe it's not true, doesn't that tell you something pretty bad about this situation? Yeah, it's just, it's, it, it's one, one more bit of evidence that points yeah. towards the lab and points towards Chinese communist culpability in what was happening in that lab. Um, and again, I wouldn't put anything past the Chinese Communist Party. Senator, thank you. Good to see you tonight.